Hi everyone, my name is Kevin. Today I wanna to show you how you can both get and also use the Zoom video conferencing app for your phone, whether you use an iPhone or an Android phone. Now, first off, what is video conferencing? Well, with video conferencing, it helps you stay in touch with friends and family, with your coworkers, or if you're in a school setting with your classmates and your teacher. So with video conferencing, some of the things you could do is you could speak with others, you could see others' videos, you could share files, you could also share your screen. It makes working together and collaborating very easy. All right, well, why don't we get started and I'll show you how, first off, you can get the Zoom app. Now today, I'm going to be using an iPhone, but if you have an Android phone, an iPhone, you'll be able to follow along. The apps are very similar regardless of which phone you happen to be on. Now on an iPhone, what we're gonna do first is we are going to click into the App Store. If you're on an Android phone, click into the Play Store. And what we're gonna do is we are going to search for Zoom. If you search for Zoom, it should show up as the first match. So here I see Zoom Cloud Meetings is number one. I've actually gone ahead and I've installed the app already. If you haven't, click on install. In this case, I'm simply going to click on open and that'll open up the Zoom app. Now once the Zoom app opens, you're gonna first see a first run experience and it's gonna talk about what you can do with Zoom. So first off, you could start a meeting, you could start or join a meeting on the go. You could share content and so you could share things that others can see. You could also message your team. You could send texts, voice messages, files, images, and lastly, let's get Zooming. Now if I go back to the main screen here, I have three different options that I can choose. I could either join a meeting, sign up, or I could simply sign in. Now let's say you're a student and your teacher shared a link and you just wanna join, you just wanna enter the meeting without having to sign up or sign in. Simply click on join a meeting. And what you can do here is you simply type in the meeting ID that let's say your teacher shared with you or maybe a coworker shared with you. You type in a meeting ID, then you could customize what your name is for the meeting. In this case, it says Kevin's iPhone. I'd probably wanna come up with something better than that, but for now, I'm just gonna leave that as is. And then down at the bottom, you have two different options that you could toggle on and off. The first one is don't connect to audio. When you turn that on, that means when you join the meeting, your microphone and your audio will be turned on. And then turn off my video if that's toggled on, what that'll do is when you join a meeting, your video will by default be turned on. So you could choose how you want to enter the meeting. Now, that's how you join a meeting. It's pretty simple to do, doesn't require setting up an account. You could very easily get in. I'm gonna go back to the main screen though, and I recommend if you're going to be using Zoom uh, more substantially, I'd recommend either signing up or signing in. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sign in because what you could do is, here I could sign in with a Zoom account if I wanna set one up, or what I could do is I could sign in with either a Google or a Facebook account so I don't have to set up a separate Zoom account. In this case, I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, use my Google account and I'll go ahead and then choose my Google account that I wanna log in with. And what'll happen then is this will log me in and uh, now I'm gonna be confronted with a whole bunch of different permission screens. Uh, Zoom wants to send me notifications, sure. It wants to use my calendar, sure. Let's go ahead and do that. And it also wants to integrate with Siri. Now the nice thing of working with Siri is I could use Siri to say, hey Siri, join my next Zoom meeting. Or I could say, what meetings do I have coming up today? Uh, so I could do quite a bit with Siri and I'll just go ahead and click on okay. And then that drops me in the main Zoom screen. All right, well this is the main Zoom screen that you're gonna see once you log in. And I have a few different options across the top. I could either create a new meeting, join a meeting, schedule a meeting, or share my screen. We're gonna walk through and I'll show you what you can do with each one of those. The second button, the join button, if I click on that, that's similar to the join uh, meeting option that we saw on the main screen. So here you could simply join a meeting. All the options here are the same as what we just looked at. Uh, but what I wanna do now is I wanna actually create my own meeting. And to do that, I'll simply click on this orange button, new meeting in the top left-hand corner. And here what I could do is I'm asked, it asks me a few different questions. Do I wanna join with video on? Well, I'm the host, so maybe I'll go ahead and do that. And then there's also something called a personal meeting ID. Now this meeting ID is assigned to you. Uh, whoever joins this meeting ID, they'll join your personal meeting. Um, let's say you have lots of back-to-back -back meetings. You probably don't wanna use the same meeting ID across them. So I'm just gonna go ahead and leave that off. And now I'm gonna go ahead and start the meeting. What this will do, it wants access to my camera. Well, I said I wanted my video on, so sure. 
Uh, it wants my microphone. Well, to join a video conference, it makes sense to allow access to your microphone. Uh, and then also if I wanna hear others, I need to use internet audio. So I'll go ahead and click yes to that. And hey, here I am in the main Zoom interface. Now what I wanna walk through is you don't wanna have a video conference just by yourself. You wanna add others to it. So how do you add others? Well, in the center at the very top, you see a number and a passcode. I could share that with others. And when they type that in, they'll be able to join my meeting. What I can also do is you'll see this little uh, call out there that says invite your contacts to join this meeting. So if I click on participants, uh, that'll bring up the participant view and now this is where I can add others. So I see myself as in the meeting. If I, in the bottom left hand corner, I could click on invite. And what this will allow me to do is I could send an invite via email, a message, I can invite contacts, I could also copy the URL. So many different ways I could share this meeting with others and get others to join the meeting. Uh, so for now, I'm just gonna close this, but that's how you get other people in your meeting. Uh, some of the other options I have at the bottom, I can mute all the attendees um, or I could unmute all. So let's say I'm trying to share something and there are a lot of people in the meeting and there's background noise, I could simply mute everyone. So kind of a nice control I have, uh, but this is how you get more people into your meeting. Now I'm gonna go back to the main screen and just show some of the other functionality here. Uh, one of the things I could do in the top left-hand corner, I could flip my camera so there you could see my light that I'm filming with and I'm gonna flip it back onto me. Uh, some of the other things that I could do across the bottom, I could mute myself. Uh, so here I'm gonna go ahead and mute myself. Um, I could stop my video and there you see this really handsome guy in a photo up here. Who is that? I'm gonna go ahead and start my video again. Let's turn that back on and there I am. One of the very nice things that you could do with the Zoom uh, mobile app is you can share content. So I'm gonna click on that middle button on the bottom bar in green. And what this will allow me to do is I could share my mobile screen. So I share my entire screen. So let's say I go to a website or to an app, everyone will be able to see that. I could share specific photos from my device. I could go on to share an iCloud file, Box, Dropbox, Google Drive, OneDrive. I could share a specific website URL, a bookmark. Uh, so lots of different screen sharing options. Um, what I can also do on here as well, if I swipe to the right, what this will do is it brings up safe driving mode. So it gets rid of a lot of the, the noise from the experience. And here I can simply tap on tap to speak. I could say what I wanna say and then click on done speaking and then my microphone will be muted again. So it's kind of a nice feature if you're driving where it doesn't take your attention off of the road. So I'm gonna go back to the main experience here. If I don't touch anything on the screen for a little while, what'll happen is all the controls disappear, but if I click on the screen again, the controls will reappear. In the top left-hand corner, if I cl click on the uh, speaker icon, I could turn off my audio or I could turn it back on and then I could hear other people in the room. And now I'm gonna click on, in the bottom right-hand corner, there's an ellipses with a dot, dot, dot that says more. I'm gonna click on that. These are ways, so at the very top, you could see a clap and a thumbs up. Up. Let's say that you know Kevin said something especially noteworthy. I could click on the clap and then that shows the clap for everyone in the room. Um, so let's say you don't want to turn on your microphone to say, hey, great job, but you could show the clap. Uh, back in here, I can also chat with other attendees. Um, I have some meeting settings. I'll show that in a moment. You can minimize the meeting. Minimize the meeting brings me back to the main Zoom interface. And then if I click on the video, it'll bring me back into the meeting and if I click back here, one of the crowd pleasers is the virtual background. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on virtual background. Um, here I'll click on the Golden Gate Bridge. That'll apply a virtual background. Hey, look at that. All of a sudden I went from my basement to the bridge in just seconds. If I click on this plus icon, wants access to my photos, what I could do too is I could choose a photo on my phone and then I could set that as a virtual background. Uh, so the same functionality from the desktop is also available on the mobile device. I'm gonna go ahead and close this. And if I click back on more, I just wanna quickly show what some of the meeting settings are. Um, so first off, you could lock the meeting so no one else can join. Uh, you could set a waiting room. With a waiting room, you have to admit people in. Uh, that gives you a little bit more control over who comes in the meeting. And then you could also set whether participants can share their screen, if they could chat with everyone or only the host, uh, whether people could rename themselves. So these are some things, Zoom bombing's been in a thing recently where people join and immediately share their screen. You could turn that off. And so it gives you a little bit of extra uh, kind of safety in your uh, meeting setting. Uh, and then there are a number of other controls where you can mute people on entry. So if someone joins and their microphone's on, you don't just get you know lots of random background noise coming on right away. Um, and then one of my favorites, touch up my appearance. I'll go ahead and check that. 
And if I go back to the main view, check that out, my skin is a little bit clearer. So nice functionality here. Now what I'm gonna do is, that's the core meeting functionality. I'm gonna go ahead and end this meeting. And when I click on end, what it allows me to do is I can either leave the meeting or I could end the meeting. So if there's another host in the meeting, they could continue on without me or I could simply end it for all. In this case, I'm the only one here. So I'm gonna go ahead and end it. Okay, back on the main screen of Zoom. So we just looked at how you could create and host a meeting, how you could join a meeting. Some of the other functionality that you have here moving across the top, you could also click on schedule. And this allows me to schedule a meeting and this will show up on my, uh, my I uh, calendar. And you know, I have all sorts of settings where you could say, do you want a password? Do you want the host video on? So here I could go ahead and configure how the meeting appears. And lastly, you can also share your screen. So you can immediately join a meeting and enter while sharing your screen. Here you have to type in either a meeting ID or a sharing key, uh, or you could simply join the meeting and then share your screen. So just another way if you just wanna immediately enter and share your screen. Then at the base of the screen, we're gonna walk through some of that functionality. So meet and chat, this is my main screen. If I had contacts here, I'd be able to send messages and then meet with individuals. Um, here, if I click on the meetings tab, um, I'll get a view of all my meetings coming up. And here again, it tells me what my personal meeting ID is. I could click into contacts. I don't have any contacts. So this view is a little bare here. Uh, and then lastly, I also have a set of settings that I can configure. Uh, and so I could go through here and set different meeting settings or contact settings and so on and so forth. All right, well, what I wanted to do is just show how you could both get and then also use the Zoom video conferencing app on your phone. The really nice thing about having the app on your phone is I also have it on my desktop, but when you have it on your phone, especially when you have a lot of meetings throughout the day, it's nice to be able to get outside, to walk around, and yet you're still fully connected. You still can see what people are sharing. You can still see people's video. You can hear all the audio. So even when you're on the go, whether you're walking, whether you're on a train or on a bus, you're still very connected when you use the mobile app and it has much of the functionality that you have in the desktop app. Anyway, if this video helped you learn how to use the Zoom mobile app, please give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos like this in the future, hit that subscribe button. That way you'll get a notification anytime new content like this comes out. And lastly, if there are any other topics that you wanna see me cover in the future or anything else that you wanna learn about, leave a comment down below. I read them all and I'll add it to my list of videos to create. All right, well, that's all I had for you today. I hope you enjoyed and hope to see you next time. Bye.